hello class 12th now the part third of the first chapter we will start here now the next data type is float so at runtime you can change the value whatever you want by the keyboard you can assign any value any kind of integer value you can provide here to any variable it's not necessary that you have to take the variable as a a you can take any any named variable x y z whatever you want now the next one is floating point or you can say decimal data type floating point only the difference is here you have to pass this value to the variable with this dot operator or we can see here decimal point it is not here dot operator because dot operator is used for assigning or capturing all the features of the object and this dot is declared here decimal point section so here we will include here float function which is used for the floating point values here we were using here int and here we are using here float same statement we can write here a is equal to float input then in double quotes you have to write here enter floating point number so at run time this line will be printed here then by keyboard you can assign any value to a Now the next one is complex number. Third type of this number that is complex number. Complex number is basically including iota or you can say its first part can be an integer and the second part will include then iota, i, o, j, whatever you want the variable will give here. You can convert any kind of integer a floating point to complex number by this expression a equal to complex complex is the floating function and as an argument you are passing here 5 so the output will be provided to you 5 as you have passed here 5 5 plus 0 because you are not giving here another argument so it will take by default 0 j if you pass here a is equal to complex here 5 and 2 like this so it will provide you 5 plus 2j like in this form now the next one is string string is just a collection of letters digits symbols etc in the double quotes as you are writing here any word with space or without space no matter because all these things all these letters you are writing in the double quotes it will include it in string so it has to be categorized in two ways single line or multi line string we can say first a is the variable you are taking and then you can pass any word here you can give it a space also it doesn't matter second one how can you create multi line string for the multi line string you have to use here triple quotes instead of double quotes you can use here triple quotes and then use here backward slash backward slash is used for the combining these strings so welcome back to school this is a one string but you have divided in three lines so it can be a way of writing the string so this is known as the multi line string because we are taking here three lines to declare one string. Now there is one more question. What do you mean by string traversing? As we have discussed in 11th class very deeply. What do you mean by traverse, uh, traversing? But uh, let me clear briefly here. Traversing that means each of the element of the string we are visited. That is known as traversing of the string. And it is done with the for loop. Okay, let's start with the next data type that is Boolean. Boolean is a data type which has only the one value, either true or false. So two positive values are there, either true or false, one at one time. Let's suppose I'm giving here one example. S is equal to computer science. That is a string. I'm passing here. Now B is another variable. S dot is upper. Dot is the, dot is the operator. 
operator which is used to access all these features of the object that is string and one of the feature of the object is this method is upper is upper we are used to check the string is in uppercase or not so i'm passing here at dot is the upper and these blank arguments we are passing here just only now print the b so b will include only the output as true or false if this string will have all the letters in upper case answer will be true otherwise it's false so b is a kind of variable that will take the boolean value either true or false now the next one is list list is just a collection of items or elements you can say which has own index that means by default it will take the index starting with the zero 1 2 3 4 and so on whatever elements you are passing here and the second important thing about list is mutability okay the data type will consist here one feature either mutable or immutable so what do you mean by mutability and immutability that means here we have mutability that means we can change the variable or variables values at their place that is known as mutability and when you can't change the value of the data type at their place that is known as immutability so let's see how can it will be applicable list is mutable suppose i'm passing here one list l is equal to 59 d c see it's a collection of different different data types here i'm taking two elements of integer type and two elements of string type i'm passing here l of 0 it will indexing here 0 1 2 3 indexing always start with the 0 so l will have here 0th position 5 now i'm passing here at 0th position 50 so it is valid it will take or it will change 5 is to 50 it will change the value 5 with 50 because it is mutable now let's see the tuple tuple is same like as list but the main important and major difference is immutability strings and tuples both are immutable we can't change or we can't modify the items at their places because of immutability of data type let's see the example here T I am taking any variable for the tuple and these parentheses we are including here 66 and 99 I am taking here two elements now it's indexing same as in list 0 1 it is indexing 0 and 1 now I am passing here 90 at the 0th position but because of immutability it will give you an error this is the concept of immutability now the rest two data types we will discuss in the later video thank you